কামরুন আর আমি বলবো স্যার ওকে ইন uh give uh, opening remarks to start the session hello very good evening to everyone and i on my behalf and on behalf of bangladesh cardiac society i welcome professor sevan at dhaka meeting it is our great pleasure and honor to have you with us with this webinar and i hope in the next few minutes there will be a very good enjoyable session uh, with the presentation of Uh, professor shaivan uh, and with this uh, few words i welcome all the participants all the faculty to this session thank you very much thank you uh, yeah lots of uh, faculties here professor abdul rahman professor fadil qadir samalik uh, dr john sir george professor meshkat dr khalid mohsin dr timir pal from usa i think dr arun maski from nepal uh, really it is guestful session uh, our my chairman Uh, professor abdul uh, abdul wadi chudi sir please a uh, uh, few words and start the session sir uh, good evening from bangladesh to everybody and assalamu alaikum today we are to hear prof simat sibas well he is who he is we know him and he has attained that level by dint of his expertise and the level of expression he gives such a good speech and he explains things so nicely so today we are hoping that we'll be uh, entertained with a master class and i hope like me many person many panelists included and the audience as well will be learning a lot from professor shiban and thank you professor imad shiban for giving your time to us thank you from all the cardiologists from bangladesh and also from ipda thank you thank you sir uh, before starting our program i serve just a kind introduction for the for imad sivan dr imad sivan is a international cardiologist educator researcher and doctor you know everybody is the most achievement is the patent in field that is is the inventor of different parts of the international cardiology 
is a member of Society of Angiography, Cardiac Intervention, Italian Society of Cardiology, European Society of Cardiology, Italian Society of Interventional Cardiology, American Heart Association. At present, he is the Director of Interventional Cardiology at Rizzoli Hospital, Verona, Italy. He is a, a Director of Interventional and Interventional Cardiology from 1996 to 98 in Milan. He is the Associate Director of Interventional Cardiology, San Raffaele Hospital, 1997-1999. Oh, Director of Cardiology, know. University of Turin, since 1999. Associate of Cardiology, Torino, since 2000. He's a different uh, working different position. He, he was born on 9th August 1951 in Rama, Israel. 1976, he graduated from the medical school at University of Padua, that is Padua, that is Italy. 1979, he completed his postgraduate school in cardiology at the same university, 1979 to 95. He worked at Cardiovascular Pathophysiology Center at the Department of Interventional Medicine. And his training of different parts of the he training program in 1978-1979 in human study research at the Cardiothoracic Institute in London, 1988-89 training program in cardiology at St. Luke Hospital, Wisconsin University. Uh, he did lots of work in the field of industrial cardiology. Till now, more than 20,000 procedures, including PTCA, directional rotational arthrectomy, coronary stenting, IVAS, uh, intercoronary pressure wire flow, PFO closure, interventricular sepal defect closure, transcatheter, aortic valve implantation, and more than 400 peripheral angioplasty, including extracranial cavity angioplasty. He's, he did lots of business activity. He's a team also at individual level. Uh, at last, at, in the last 10 years, he focusing on the instant stenosis, complex coronary intervention, including left main, diffuse disease, development of new stent design technology, transcatheter treatment of cardiac valve disease, and activity participating several international markets in the trial. More than 300 PubMed activities, over 600 abstracts, and more than five book chapters he writes, wrote. We are grateful to be an international patron of IPDI. Professor Imad Sivan is a great clinician, interventional cardiologist, teacher, researcher, and proctor. Above all, he's a great human being. IPDI wishes his healthy and long life. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm requesting Professor Imad Suvan, please, you will start your talk. Well, first of all, I would like to thank you very much for this kind presentation. I, I'm really, uh, it is real pleasure being with you. I'm, I'm really honored to, uh, to join your meeting. Uh, Today, I will uh, share with you my experience about uh, bifurcation, just I'm really sorry, just, just one minute, I'll be sharing. I have some problem with Do you see my, my slides now? Uh, no, sir. No. Yes. Actually, we saw them previously. Now we can't see, but we could see the yes, yes, yes. slides initially. We could see them. Just, just, sure. Okay, sir. Nice, sir. It's okay, sir. Just screen. Okay, okay. Sorry for this. It's technical problem, but we overcome that. Yeah, we always it ha always happens to all of. Yeah. 
It's often happened. So I will take you through bifurcation, but I would like to start from uh, the relevance of side branch, which is the main thing in bifurcation is side branch. So everything in bifurcation treatment, it depends on side branch. And first of all, and to define what is important or what is not important, it is starting from coronary stenosis side branch, uh, how should be evaluated, of course, by severity, by clinical relevance, that means by vis visual and side distribution, as well as myocardial mass at risk uh, from uh, uh, this uh, coronary stenosis, and the prognostic relevance as well, that means related to long-term outcome and MACE. So clinically relevant vessel treatment should be translated in relief of symptoms and ischemia and improvement of prognosis that means preventing myocardial infarction and severe arrhythmias. So what about side branch in bifurcation lesion? Do we have confirmed angio criteria to evaluate the clinical relevance of side branch? Well, we do not have exactly uh, uh, exact criteria, but we have some uh, data coming from uh, from some study like this. Uh, if you see that uh, in this study, it was shown that in terms of ischemia at risk revascularization, it is better than medical uh, uh, treatment when moderate to severe ischemia exists. Therefore, it is important to define what is the side branch that covers more than 10% of, uh, of myocardium. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, provoking ischemia. So in this study, uh, revascularization will be better uh, than medical therapy if side branch will be covering more than 10% of, uh, of myocardium. Uh, clinically, uh, uh, revascularization of insignificant side branch is not translated in clinical benefits. We should uh, remember this. So it also might be even harmful for the patient. So if that means if side branch is not clinically irrelevant, we should not treat it. And this is also coming from uh, guidelines for myocardial revascularization, uh, then indicating revascularization only for vessel covering more than 10% of myocardial, myocardial mass. Uh, from myocardial segmentation technique with CT scan, uh, these uh, authors have been able to identify the, which side branches or which vessel can cover more than 10% of myocardial mass. And in terms of uh, uh, length of lesion and size of the lesion, size more than 2.5 and length more than 73 millimeters. Uh, if vessel is reaching these criteria, then that means it covers more than 10% of, uh, of myocardium and treatment or revascularization is indicated. Again, uh, this is from the same study showing that uh, side branch length is important and the side of bifurcation, that means left main bifurcation, which is always providing not side vessel, but actually two main vessels then are significant and should be taken in consideration every time. Again, uh, the look, uh, location of uh, bifurcation is important. You see that uh, the coverage of more than 10% of myocardial mass will be much more uh, often encountered in, uh, in, uh, uh, with the first diagonal more than posterolateral or distal posterolateral of right coronary artery. That means the site of bifurcation is also important. There are uh, a score uh, which was adapted in, uh, from Korean uh, group, uh, taking consideration size, number of uh, diagonal, that means the first or second, the OPT, and the highest of, uh, of the origin of the, the, uh, the, the side branch as score uh, to, uh, to guide for clinical relevance and to decide the treatment. But actually what is much more easier is to look on angio and you will see that 
just uh, in a schematic uh, way, you can see that a side branch that a long, long more than 73 millimeters and size more than 2.5 will cover a large area as compared to small vessel not reaching 73 uh, millimeters in length and will cover a small area. That mean this will be helping in judging what we are seeing on Anjo. Just to show you some example, for example, this uh, first diagonal is a huge diagonal and you can see the area covered by this diagonal is important and is relevant for the patient. While if we look on this diagonal, it is not, it is small diagonal and the area covered by this diagonal is small and will not affect the prognosis of patient. Just to look, look what will happen if you lose an important diagonal, then uh, like after stenting in main vessel, this happened in, uh, in our cat lab. And you'll see that ACG immediately you'll have severe ischemia and severe uh, symptoms as well by the, by the patient. And when, when you are recovering this, uh, this uh, side branch, then everything, everything will be coming back in place and you'll recover also uh, the, uh, the, the ACG as well as symptoms at, at all. Now, not all bifurcation lesions are born equally. So should we go for tailored approaches? Well, if tailored approach, it cannot be guided by, for example, Medina classification, because we are following more and more Medina. But if you look on Medina, Medina do, do not give us any, uh, any information, or any detail about uh, uh, lesion characteristics, severity, size, uh, side branch, size and length of lesion, the angle, if they're calcification or tortuosity. So this is, uh, excellent uh, classification, just helping in uh, uh, guiding us about the distribution of lesion, but not guiding for uh, a strategy, a strategy selection. And this is another uh, classification uh, recently uh, proposed by Mamas Mamas, again, taking into consideration only the diameters, but not all the characteristics of, page, of, of lesion. So if in terms of examples, you can see that if we follow Medina, these are two patients with 111 Medina, but we all agree with me that strategy in this patient will be much different than in this other patient because the characteristic of lesion is completely different, even if or both defined by 111. Again, same here, 111, 111 Medina, but again, strategy will be completely different in these, in these two patients. Another characteristics, if you have multiple, bifur multiple bifurcation, for example, in this bifurcation, you see the side branch having another important bifurcation. The other, other, uh, uh, other factor that uh, can uh, uh, guide you or can impact your, uh, your selection is the angle and the difficulty of access to side branch, then it could be another reason to choose one or another strategy, as well as diffusion of disease on what we'll call side branch, as well as possible dissection or predicting dissection on side branch, then also this can help in or might have an impact on a strategy selection. If we look about studies, of course, we are randomized or registry studies comparing one versus two stands, then some, some confusion will be created. But most of these studies showing that there is no difference between one or two, two stands. However, some will show that there is uh, some, even if not significant difference, even in mortality, and uh, some other will, not, uh, will, uh, will have better outcome as uh, less maze. But again, if we look on which patients are included in these studies, the, these studies are mixing patients with complex and uh, simple bifurcation together, then cannot be Linda. totally, uh, totally uh, uh, reasonable. So what is an, uh, important is uh, to know that if you are shifting, if you are starting with single stenting and shifting to two stents technique, then your procedure will be associated with more mace. 
So it is very important to plan as intention to treat what is necessary to do in every patient. That means if it is single stenting, start with single stenting, but you should also know that patients who need two stents should be planned as two stents from the beginning. And if you are shifting from single to two stents, then this will uh, be associated with more mace. And the only study that uh, have uh, uh, investigated uh, in detail what is simple and what's complex is definition one study, uh, which was defining what is complex, uh, simple lesion, lesion on side branch with a length less than 10 millimeters and one not associated with uh, other characteristics like multiple bifurcation, uh, thrombus uh, containing length of lesion on the uh, main vessel and so on. And complex bifurcation was more than 10 millimeter on side branch. And uh, if you look on what is coming from this study, that we that when simple bifurcation defined by definition criteria was treated with single stent, that means provisional stenting, provisional stenting was doing much better than two stents in simple bifurcation. But if we go for complex bifurcation, then two stent strategy were doing much better than provisional stenting in complex bifurcation. And this was also confirmed by definition two studies showing that complex bifurcation with the complex stenting is doing much better than provisional stenting in terms of less target lesion revascularization, less uh, uh, myocardial infarction, and uh, less uh, target lesion failure. So it is very important to define what is complex and what is uh, simple in order to choose the right uh, strategy for bifurcation lesion. So one or two stain strategy, we should every time start from clinical relevance. That means what it is relevant or not. Then size, uh, size branch lesion severity and length, disease extension, the angle, the calcification, all these characteristics should be taken in consideration in order to choose the right strategy for the right patient. Then from technical point of view, uh, Today, I think uh, bifurcation, bifurcation uh, stenting strategies are simple. That means provisional stenting are complex. Then what is mostly, uh, mostly used in clinical practice is T-stenting or modified T or TAP or mini crush or DK crush and uh, cool out or mini cool out. So complex stenting, we have more than one strategy that to uh, to have uh, uh, to, uh, to to go for uh, uh, two stents technique and in the uh, operator experience in practicing a particular optimized double stenting technique is it probably more relevant than the specific technique itself. That means if you have good ex experience with the uh, uh, specific uh, uh, strategy, then do it every time, but do it optimally. And of course, intracoronary imaging and physiology evaluation is very important for planning the procedure, for intra-procedure guidance, as well as for optimization. And we have a lot of data uh, uh, to uh, confirming, uh, whether randomized or registry is confirming that the importance of imaging guidance in bifurcation lesion. So to summarize, think uh, lesion bifurc bifurcation lesion today, uh, we have to evaluate first step is clinically, uh, the clinical relevant of uh, relevance of side branch in terms of size and length of side branch. Distal lift main, of course, every time you, you do not have side branch, but you have main vessel. So every time it's an uh, important vessel. If it's not, if it's not uh, relevant, then keep it open. That is, you don't have to, to go for, uh, uh, for bifurcation lesion intervention. And if it is yes, then it is relevant. So according to uh, severity of lesion, length of uh, lesion on side branch, length of side branch and so on, that means to define if it is simple, then go, go for elective sample stenting. If it is complex, then go for complex, uh, elective complex stenting. 
And uh, what about techniques? Well, first of all, we should uh, uh, understand the anatomy of uh, bifurcation before doing any strategy. And we should re remember that uh, pro the proximal, uh, the proximal main vessel diameter is bigger than the distal, uh, distal uh, main vessel diameter. So we need uh, something to uh, oppose the stent correctly at the bifurcation. And this is, can be done easily by pot if you are selecting the stent accordingly to the distal vessel, uh, uh, main vessel size. Then after uh, delivering the stent, you go with a larger balloon in the proximal part of the stent, proximally to the bifurcation, and you will have finally the stent opposed completely and correctly uh, respecting also the anatomy of bifurcation. This is uh, one from one side. From the other side, you have good opposition of the stent and good opening of the struts by pot technique uh, uh, toward the side branch. So you can make it more easy to cross with wires to side branch. Another important thing is to know the designs of your, the stent you are using, how much you can expand the stent without deformation how much you can open the stand, the strut stand, and which stand can be more adequate for, uh, for one technique or the other, for example, culotte or decay crush or so on. Now going for specifically for, for uh, each uh, uh, strategy, I think each strategy needs to go step by step, uh, like uh, starting with provisional stenting, then I'll show you this example for, this is distal lift main. Um, angiographically, you cannot define what is better to do one single stent or two stents. So I think that uh, I was uh, in these cases is very important to uh, define uh, completely the distribution of, uh, of the, uh, the, the plaque and to decide whether it is simple or complex. In this case, we see that circumflex ostium is quite free from, uh, uh, from uh, plaque. So we decided here to go for provisional stenting. So first step here is uh, wiring both, uh, both uh, branches, then predilate, put the stent pot after stenting. So to uh, oppose the stent completely on the bifurcation, and after this, if you, if, you have, if you have good angiographic results, you do not have to do any other thing. If you have some hazening, as in this case, then go for uh, side branch opening or kissing balloon. And again, after this, report, and you will have the final result. And this was the final result checked by IVUS and uh, uh, showing that everything in place, everything is optimized, and this will be the final, the final uh, result. If you will have some shifting of black, then I think evaluation by FFR is good. Like in this case, it's 0, 0, 8, uh, 0, 080. Then something you should do in order to improve the, uh, the result here. And uh, just with the small balloon, if you inflate a small balloon to correct the carina shifting, then FFR will be coming back normal and you do not need any, any other intervention on side branch. That means you can leave it without stent. And of course, checking by IVUS will, uh, will give you more confidence to leave it like this. If you have uh, if, uh, some, in, in case of persistent significant compromise of side branch from uh, uh, provisional stenting, you can, uh, uh, go for stenting side branch by tap technique or culotte technique. Whether you are doing uh, tap or culotte, you should uh, every time look to on the final result to optimize the final uh, result every time you are doing any, uh, any uh, step of your procedure. Uh, in uh, osteal, Osteal stenting, I think it is very important to pay attention to the overexpansion 
and the stent shortening. Like in this case, you can see very complex case. We did it in uh, an emergency uh, uh, sitting and this was the final result. We have not the time because patient was on uh, hemodynamically in, uh, uh, instable. Uh, so we did it very quickly. And it seems that angio angiography was fine. Every e everything was in place. And uh, we think that it was optimized. But patient after two months came back with a brain stenosis on the ostium of, of left main. And we checked by IVOS at this time. And you see that on IVOS, at uh, the ostium of uh, left main, there was no stent. And the stent was just two or three millimeters uh, 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 beyond the, uh, the, the ostium. That was maybe because we were over expanding a stent 3.5 by a balloon 4.5, then this might shorten the stent and uh, uh, you, you can miss the coverage of the ostium as, as in this case. And this case needed a second stent to be corrected, short stent in left main to be corrected at, again at two months of the uh, procedure. So every time you are uh, stenting lift, uh, lift main or, or at the ostium, you should be uh, sure that you are covering full coverage of the ostium and pay attention also to the longitudinal deformation of the, the stent by guiding catheter. When, uh, when you are retrieving your uh, delivery balloon, some, sometime the friction will suck the guiding catheter into the uh, lift main and this might uh, crush the stent, longitudinal stent, as well as if you are retrieving a jailed wire, uh, uh, the stent, and this again can, can suck the uh, guiding catheter into the uh, uh, lift main and crushing the stent longitudinally. So every time you are moving something from, from the uh, coronary after stenting, you should come back with your guiding catheter in order to avoid this. Whether it's kissing balloon or not, uh, after provisional stenting, I think if you do, do not have any compromise of side branch, you're still having TME3 flow, you uh, no ECG signs of ischemia, no symptoms by the patient, uh, kissing balloon is not mandatory, it's not required. Uh, uh, you can leave it without. If you, are, if you need uh, kissing balloon, then you should correct after kissing balloon with pot or Alternatively, you can see or you can, uh, you can uh, treat side branch and then pot or pot side branch report. So all these are alternatives to, uh, to uh, kissing balloon, but uh, actually we do not have that much clinical data showing that one is better than the other, uh, uh, the other. So what is important, remember that proximal part have to be uh, optimized by pot every time you are doing something on, on, on uh, side branch, whatever you are doing. Uh, second, uh, complex. Now let's go for complex uh, uh, stenting, starting with T stenting, modified T and tap. And I think again here, every step should be respected. Every step should be followed. So st starting with the wiring, predilatation, lesion preparation if needed by atherectomy or any debulking device, then stenting main vessel with jailed wire, then post dilatation proximal optimization uh, and rewiring dist distally to side branch, then kissing balloon inflation with a, uh, with, or a single balloon inflation uh, is performed to open the strut stent. And uh, then the next step is the placement of the stent inside branch and uh, uh, with undeflated balloon, uninflated balloon in main vessel. And you should be aware about where to put your stent. Uh, the stent should be uh, protruding, uh, just a small protrusion, minimal protrusion in main vessel. And uh, after this, delivering the stent, coming back with the balloon and doing kissing again. And uh, this is, will be the final result. That means you, are, you will be creating a, a small carina, metallic carina here. What is a very important in your performing tap is that 
inflation and deflation in final kissing balloon should be simultaneous because if you are inflating uh, uh, if you are inflating uh, or deflating the balloon first uh, side branch then this carina will be flaring toward the side branch so it is very important to inflate and deflate the both balloon together simultaneously in order to keep this carina in between uh, not flaring from side to another uh, advantage of uh, tap approach is relatively simple assures osteal, osteal uh, coverage less metal metal at the uh, side branch osteum compared to crush but we have a very important disadvantages which requires precise placement of side branch uh, stand which is not easy by anjo uh, excessive uh, stent protrusion can cause main uh, main branch access problem later if you need to do something distally to bifurcation in the future can be uh, difficult uh, balloon deflation in kissing should be mandatory simultaneous might be more difficult to treat restenosis in these cases uh, going for a crash now uh, as a second uh, complex bifurcation stenting uh, well i'll speak about dk crash uh, because I think it is, if you are doing crush, I think the best uh, crush approach is DK crush today. Uh, that's because you are not leaving too much liars in front, in front of the side branch. Again, I think uh, IVUS, uh, IVUS evaluation every time is uh, to plan your procedure is important. Uh, the first step is pre-dilatation of both uh, vessel, both uh, branches. Uh, then uh, stent inside branch with a balloon in uh, main vessel. After uh, the balloon main vessel, uh, after stenting uh, side branch, then the stent is uh, crushed with the balloon already present in, uh, in uh, main vessel. Next step is going to be the crossing, the crushed segment of the stent to side branch and uh, mandatory to cross proximally, not distally. That proximal crossing here in order to avoid abluminal crossing outside of the stand. And if you will cross here in this part, then after inflating a balloon, you will be, you will have something like this. That means crushing the stand at the side of side branch, at the osteomer side branch, and this will be never be corrected anymore. You will have something like this with very bulky, which predisposing for even for a uh, uh, high rate of stent thrombosis as well. Then next step will be uh, after crushing, uh, after, after crossing to side branch, first kissing balloon with a balloon in main vessel and side branch. And after first, uh, first uh, 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 kissing, then stenting main vessel after stenting main vessel, a pot in main vessel in order to facilitate crossing to side branch. After this, cross again, proximal or mid crossing of, uh, of the, the, the stent of side branch uh, with the wire. Then this is again to avoid, if you will have some, some gap here, still having some gap here to avoid cross distally uh, outside a bluminal crossing and then you'll have uh, you'll crush the stent and after this uh, sequential uh, post dilatation main vessel side branch and after sequential then second kissing balloon final pot and uh, final anjo with the final uh, uh, check with ibus in order to be sure that everything is optimized everything in place uh, finally, culotte uh, technique. Uh, culotte technique, uh, we all know what it is. It is very old technique. It's what's introduced is the, the 90s. We have some pros and contras. Uh, we, we know that uh, it is, uh, can be used uh, as a provisional bifurcation stenting. Uh, is is adaptable uh, adaptable uh, to varying angles that mean it can be used in uh, different anatomies of bifurcation and ensure complete uh, lesion coverage and of course uh, 
uh, with some ex exceptions. Uh, what is contrary is access to main vessel uh, side branch loss during stenting, stent implantation can be challenging. In distal lift main, often too large, uh, too, uh, that means mismatch between the uh, what is we consider uh, side branch and main vessel. Relatively few deaths uh, with proven uh, uh, with proven um, strut opening that can, might be open more than 3.5. But today, I, I would say that uh, today we have uh, uh, more than one stent with larger opening of a strut that means more adequate to be used uh, for colot technique. Uh, limitations of the colot, again, strut cannot be fully opposed to the vessel wall. Side branch stent is undersized, smaller than main vessel, often overstretched and not matching with the main vessel size that limit, limit uh, the limitation of expansion. But again, today we have some stents that can be uh, overexpanded much more than what we have in the past. Multiple layers opposed to main, main branch uh, can predispose to instant restenosis or stent uh, thrombosis. Uh, again, uh, this is true if you look on uh, uh, long metallic overlapping will, uh, will, uh, will cause uh, uh, velocity, uh, velocity uh, reduction and uh, this might, uh, might predispose for, uh, for stent thrombosis. But of course, if you are doing any overlapping of stent, you much aim to shorten as, as, uh, as much as you can the overlapping, the segment, segments of stents overlapping. So I would say we should go every time for mini crush if you are using crushing or mini culotte if you are using uh, culotte technique in order to minimize the overlapping segment of the stents. Uh, can be improved, of course, yes, because we have stent design and selection uh, today we have more uh, options uh, and more adequate stents. Uh, stent opposition and expansion can be, of course, by pot uh, and uh, kissing balloon inflation can be improved. Appropriate stent crossing with guide wire, intravascular imaging guidance as well. Uh, of course, you will all agree uh, with me that today we have stents, already stents on the market and used in daily practice we can open too much the struts without deformation outside. And uh, this can be, these kind of stent can be more adequate for uh, culotte technique. Uh, just to show you an example, again, here, this is a culotte technique. This is the first step, again, pre-dilatation, adequate lesion preparation, if needed, uh, rota or any debulking, uh, uh, debulking device you should be used. Uh, at this in uh, first step. Second step is crossover stenting from side branch to uh, from side branch uh, to uh, lift to main vessel and to minimize the protrusion of the stent in main vessel in order to have less overlapping of stent when you are stenting main vessel. Then third step is uh, to cross the stent to main vessel, to distal main vessel, and crossing as nearest as possible to the orifice of side band. That means distally. Again, after crossing, after crossing, uh, re, uh, after rewiring, go for uh, uh, step uh, five, opening the strut of the stent and doing a first kissing balloon again here. This is something that can help in uh, uh, expanding the, uh, the, the, the segment of the stent protruding in main vessel, uh, fully expanding that segment and opening and preparing the, st the stent adequately to receive the second stent in main vessel. And uh, after, after kissing balloon, I'll do a pot stand, a pot in the main vessel segment of the stand. And this, what, what you will have at the, at the end of all these steps, that you'll have good opening of the strut toward the main distal main vessel, complete opposition of the stand 
on the orifice of side branch, no stent deformation, and everything is ready to receive uh, the second stent to main vessel. Adequately uh, expanded segment in main vessel, adequately uh, opposed stent on uh, the orifice of side branch, and then the next step will be stenting main vessel and uh, pot recrossing, opening the strut with the main vessel and final pot. Again, when you are crossing after stenting main vessel, you should avoid crossing abluminally and to avoid what to crush the stent again and to cause something that cannot be any more uh, 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 corrected. Uh, this is uh, what, uh, what you will have after stenting, after stenting main vessel. Again, crossing for side branch, uh, separate the inflation in both stent, kissing, pot, final pot, and this will be the final, final result. And if you don't have uh, IVOS, I think many times only stent boost can help you in and show you exactly how you have opposed your stent with no, uh, with no uh, deformation of the stent, fully expansion, and with good uh, respect of the anatomy of bifurcation, as you can see in stent, uh, stent uh, boost. Uh, but uh, if you have uh, intracoronary imaging, it's much better to go as final check with IWUS to, to see that everything is in place and everything is uh, correctly done and uh, optimize, uh, optimal uh, result is obtained as shown in final angio. Now, if we uh, compare all these uh, techniques, that mean uh, provisional, uh, crush, culotte, DK crush, T, and T tap, you see that the only uh, technique compared to provisional that is doing better than provisional in complex bifurcation is DK crush. If you look on single mace, you will see that uh, culotte technique is doing much better than T or tap technique uh, in terms of less than thrombosis in terms of less lesion, tar target lesion revascularization, and in terms of less cardiac death. So it is very important to keep in mind that we do not have a gold standard technique. What is important is uh, the experience of the operator in a, uh, in a specific technique, uh, the optimization every time, and the step-by-step -step approach to, uh, to perform your, uh, your procedure, whatever is your pro uh, procedure is. Uh, this is the, the very recent proposal by uh, Park, which was naming the IPSP strategy. That means lesion inspection. That means uh, planning your uh, or intravascular imaging before uh, for planning the procedure, pre-dilatation, stenting, post-dilatation and optimization by guided by intravascular imaging. And this uh, strategy uh, is shown, has been proven to be significantly improving the result, the, uh, uh, the outcome in, uh, in this patient. So usage, uh, good lesion preparation, usage of uh, intravascular imaging, uh, good pre-dilatation, good post-dilatation are important in uh, bifurcation lesions, as well as in any other stenting technique, stenting uh, procedure. So my final remarks as first step in bifurcation intervention should be evaluation of side branch clinical relevance. Second step, evaluation of bifurcation complexity and then strategy selection. If it's simple, go for simple bifurcation, uh, simple stenting. If it's complex, complex stenting. All bifurcation stenting techniques require step-by-step -step approach 
and each step needs to be respected to provide the optimal outcome. Intravascular imaging and functional evaluation are important in guiding for an optimal anatomical and functional result, as well as in improving clinical outcome. Provenial tenting is the default strategy for simple bifurcation lesions with a low rate of side branch stenting. Uh, complex stenting should be the default strategy in complex bifurcation. We do not have a gold standard approach, but uh, should proceed with that you feel more expert with. It is recommended to have experience with more than one approach because sometimes you might need uh, or your approach is not the most adequate for a specific patient. And I think that uh, the main issue today is a common and universal definition of what is simple and what is complex. Because it, if you look on definition given by different authors, is are different. So we should agree on a universal definition, what is simple and what's complex. And in the meantime, I think we should go ahead in improving our knowledge and skill in bifurcation strategies, simple or complex as well, by uh, more intravascular imaging and physiology support, bench and virtual testing, operator experience, test uh, technology, procedural optimization, all these things are having uh, provided us for so many information about, about bifurcation stenting. And we improved, of course, our, our skill, our clinical outcome also as well in this patient. But I am sure that we still having room to improve more and more. Thank you very much for your uh, attention. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Great presentation, sir. We are really delighted, sir. So simplified you that uh, complex topics in a simply simple way. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Professor Wadu, sir. Professor Abdul Wadu Chudri, sir. Uh, th yeah. Thank you, Professor Sivan. Uh, it was a actually very uh, systematic way that you have shown what to do. And you have shown very nicely. If you want to do the twist and strategy, we should think beforehand. And if you want to do it, and if we are capable of doing it, <coughs> it class you better. But whatever we choose, we have to be accustomed doing that procedure again and again, not doing here something, there something. That will be the most important thing, perhaps. Uh, thank you, sir. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Professor uh, Dr. Fazila Malik, madam, do you hear me? Yes, I do. Great talk, uh, Dr. Shiban. Really enjoyed it. And uh, uh, Dr. Shiban visited our center a few years ago, and he did such brilliant cases with us, and we learned such a lot, and today was also an, not an exception. So my question to you, Dr. Shiban, if you have to do a double stent technique, which one is your favorite, actually? And what is your impression with the double twist a lot? Uh, do you think it is good, better results? Well, actually, um... I would, uh, I mean, in my experience, in my long experience, uh, I, I will feel more comfortable with what I have started with, that means culotte technique, in two stent technique. Uh, of course, I improved, my, I improved my practice in doing that. That means I am not introducing a new culotte approach, but it is the culotte approach improved uh, step by step, uh, trying to apply what we have learned from bench testing to what I am doing in clinical practice. So I think, yeah, the culotte technique and uh, uh, double kissing uh, and pot also in double pot also in culotte technique can improve really significantly the outcome. And uh, I, I am sure that uh, there are many studies comparing uh, DK crash with uh, with the culotte technique as well other techniques with culotte that uh, are doing culotte, um, let, let's say conservatively. That means uh, as it was described at the beginning in, in the 90s, that is not applicable today. I think we have, we are, we are, we have improved too much our techniques and uh, we have much more better products today as well stands uh, 
intravascular imaging uh, guidance and so on, that of course we have improved so much our, our uh, out, uh, the outcome of the patient in these cases. So I, I, I would say that uh, culotte technique for uh, culotte double, with double stenting, double pot, uh, and the mini overlapping of stents is my, uh, is my favor today. But in the meantime, I gained also experience with other techniques because it's important to know how to do also other techniques step by step and optimize also other techniques. Uh, because culotte cannot be applied in every situation. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Professor, Professor Abdelrahman, sir, do you hear me, sir? Professor yes. Yes. yes, thank you very much. It is a really great talk. Thank it you. is really great talk. Thank you very much. And uh, because we have met each other, different meeting in the international field, and, and it is really honored that you have visited in Bangladesh so many times. That may be less in India, but so many times. So Bangladesh, all the cardiologists, is your young friend. I have, I have very, very good uh, background, very good yes, yes, remembering yes. of, of I, my I visits know. to Bangladesh, to all yes. of you in Bangladesh. Yeah. Yes, yes. So everybody, you, you are, are wonderful followers. people. Wonderful people. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, it is really great talk, and I have learned a lot. I think nothing to be discussed. Uh, every step was uh, discussed very nicely and elaborately and simply. The yeah. only thing that uh, and uh, that elaborately and nicely, so it will definitely uh, the all of our cardiologists, including me, will benefit it, and ultimately it will reflect our patient for the outcome of the patient. That's most important. So one thing is that I I want to learn from you that if you want to do the uh, let main. Uh, let me stenting and covering the let me ostium. So there is a, every chance that sometimes the stent, sometimes we have to be post dilate the stent. There is a discrepancy of the stent between the let main and the LED. Suppose sometimes we're finding in our country that is LED is literally really smaller, not like your people's, but let main sometimes it is a very disproportionate. We have to post dilate the let main. And in the situation, there is a probability of the foreshortening of the standing, and that may miss the left main ostium. So, do you think that we should um, we should place the stent a little bit a little bit proximal to the ostium, two to three minutes hanging in the in the aorta? What is your suggestion for that? Okay. Because sometimes motion we have no IVAS in our countries because we have an IVAS in our country, maybe a four or five centers. Other centers have no IVAS. That's the reality. So we have yeah. a good uh, let yeah, main sure, in sure, the centers. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, well, actually, actually, I, I think that every time you are doing lift main uh, and uh, finishing with the kissing balloon and pot and so on, it is good to cover the whole lift main because otherwise you will you might inflate the balloon outside of the stent and then will predispose for restenosis and patient will be coming back. So first step is to for me is to cover the whole lift main. How to cover the ostium? Uh, I think that uh, it is or not to protrude that much in the aorta. I think there is a very small trick to do. That is to go with a wire outside of the guiding catheter into the aorta, okay? And this, when you are pushing your guiding catheter with the wire outside in the aorta, then the guiding catheter will be stopping in front of the ostium, outside. Will never be, will never be in, uh, cannot be pushed inside the ostium of lift main. So, in this position, if you keep the marker, the proximal marker of the stent inside the guiding catheter, pushed toward the uh, toward the lift main, then inflating, uh, uh, de delivering the stent in this position, you are often, every time sure that you are covering the ostium and you are protruding not more than half strut maybe outside of the ostium. The question is, which stent you are using. Because after this, you are going for larger balloon, you are over expanding the stent, 
And if you are not having the appropriate stand, then shortening of the stand can again uh, shorten the stand and the ostium will not be covered anymore. Like the case I show you, this happened to me. I think today we have good stands that can be very, uh, I mean, expanded very, uh, very much without that much shortening. But again, you should keep in mind that every stand over expanded can be shortened at least up to 10 percent if it is over over expanded. So keep in mind this and protrude outside of the lift main just with half a half a strut in order to be sure that even if you are expanding your stand, you will not miss the Austin. I think so. This is a, but um, but most of the time we forget that the technique they, they, they demonstrate that that is a floating oil technique. And um, most of the time when you use that, but uh, I have used that and it's, I also present in the TCT. That is, a, I think so is a bit more elegant technique. So that in that way, but it's a simple, but most of the time we do not accept that. So if we have not, I was, we have amazing facilities. I think so the floating oil technique that you demonstrate that this is a very easy, nicely demonstrated technique. Thank you, Subhan. Thank you very much. Thank you. With, oh, the, with the wire, you mean you mean the wire outside of of the guiding cutter, right? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. 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 Professor Momoni Jawan, sir. Professor Doctor Momoni Jawan. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Professor Shivan. Uh, it is it's a wonderful lecture. Uh, it covers most of the most of the uh, uh, procedure techniques of the bifurcation. As you know, in our day-to-day -day practice, about 10 to 15 percent, maybe more, uh, patients are having bifurcation lesion either. Uh, LED diagonal or LCX OM or left main. Uh, the left main, uh, the, in general, the bifurcation lesion is unique uh, for each, each individual in terms of this angle and uh, variation in the diameter, lesion morphology, chances of restoration. So it is not uh, uh, the single uh, size shoe will not fit all the cases. Uh, but because of the improvement in the stain design, uh, imaging technique and also uh, increasing the, our expertise. Many uh, complex things can be done uh, by a simpler way by an expert. But but for the beginner, I should say that the, the simpler way of handling bifurcation lesion is the best. Uh, uh, one of the techniques is the single uh, stain technique or uh, tap. But Considering the complex uh, bifurcation uh, lesion, uh, 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 lesion uh, uh, if you need a two stain technique, the operator should be uh, expert enough uh, to do perfectly, uh, like uh, in Coloti, uh, in, in a DK crash. So you need a, a considerable amount of uh, expertise uh, to rewiring, recrossing, port, report. So in general, uh, for the beginner, uh, because here there are a lot of fellows is here. Uh, don't uh, my my the personal feeling is that make the uh, procedure simple, so that it will uh, not only uh, make the procedure simple, but also it will help in, uh, your stress uh, relaxation uh, um, uh, uh, after the procedure. Uh, otherwise, uh, doing a complex procedure. In a complex form, you may land, you may land up with a, uh, with a catastrophe. Thank you mm -hmm. once again, uh, 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 IPDIS, for this wonderful session. And a lot of uh, participants, still 76 participants are booking uh, this program. And once again, I uh, appreciate uh, Dr. Wadud and also Dr. Mohsin uh, to be with us uh, for this wonderful meeting and every week with the new things. Thank you very much once again. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, We have the we have uh, three or three or four international faculty. Our one of the best friend, our patron, Dr. John C. George from USA. Thank you, sir, for coming with joining us, Dr. John C. George. Yeah. Dr. Shaban, thank you again for that wonderful overview. Uh, that thank was great to, to see you walk through all the different bifurcation techniques. Uh, I like the data that you presented on the 10% uh, uh, myocardium at risk uh, for intervening on um, a side branch. 
my question to you uh, today would be, you, do you utilize um, FFR or IFR uh, in cases of uh, side branch uh, lesions or even with provisional stenting uh, with jailing of the side branch to determine whether the side branch needs to be intervened on? Well, actually, uh, I started, of course, with FFR. Uh, we have more confidence with FFR, confidence with FFR, but I, I would say that today uh, we have more and more data showing that IFR is also, uh, is, is also uh, valid. I mean, you can, you can, you can uh, rely on. So I think uh, if you do not have, I know that uh, adenosine is not available everywhere. And I think this is a, a, a good, uh, uh, of course, a good, uh, good opportunity to use IFR wh wherever you do not have adenosine. But even if, uh, I mean, in, in my cath lab, we are using more and more IFR because it's more easy to use. And uh, we're still having a grade zone between, uh, I mean, 88, 92, and then you have to, to do FFR, but it, it doesn't matter. I mean, uh, in, with the same device, you can do everything. So. I think uh, both are good, um, whether you are, will feel more comfortable or whether if you, are, you do not have uh, uh, ad available adenosine, you can use IFR as well. Today, we have a lot of data, I mean, showing that it is valid, uh, valid uh, I mean, uh, similar to, uh, to FFR. Thank you, uh, but do you, does that change your uh, bifurcation strategy? to leaning to ver towards provisional stenting plus FFR or IFR to determine if the side branch needs to be intervened on versus going upfront with the bifurcation strategy? Okay. That, uh, that was my uh, question. Well, uh, of course, of course, it is uh, a good, let's say, criteria for me uh, to evaluate before doing something on side branch. That means <coughs> from the beginning, evaluate or planning for my strategy. If I am not convinced by IVIS, I will go for FFR. Then I can decide whether I have to go for two stents or provisional stenting. Uh, of course, uh, if you will have some compromise on side branch after standing main vessel, I always going with FFR and then deciding what to do after FFR. That means opening the strut with small balloon, if FFR as, as I've shown in one example uh, previously. So if FFR is coming back, uh, you uh, patient to have no symptoms, uh, no ischemia on ACG, uh, TIMI3, uh, TIMI flow is three. I will leave it without doing any other thing. So, uh, of course, it is an important, important uh, uh, variable uh, to be used during bifurcation, uh, bifurcation interventions. Let me, I'm, I'm uh, uh, talking about FFR or IFR as well. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Urmaski. Dr. Urmaski is from Nepal. He's another, our friend, or the every session of last seven months with us, Dr. Urmaski from Nepal. Oh, yeah. Thank you, thank you. It was a nice presentation. I have one simple question. We deal with a complex uh, lesion with side branch occlusions. Most of the time we put wires and now new techniques have come like gel balloon technique and others. Do you have any ideas or opinion of that of protecting side branch? Well, well, I mean, if you have complex bifurcation uh, that means as defined the complex uh, that means long lesion on side branch uh, this is for me what is complex bifurcation uh, diffuse disease and so on then the strategy is to go for two stents for me then i don't need to protect i have to go to the de decide which strategy and go for two stents strategy if you are speaking about just uh, protecting side branch because uh, it is not relevant, but you, you, not, you do not want to lose it, then protection can be by guide wire only 
or by balloon on the guide wire, small balloon on the guide wire, stent, after stenting, open the side branch, come back with the balloon, rewire side branch and so on. Both are, I mean, any, any strategy for protection is, is good. I am used for more with uh, uh, jailing wires, not jailing balloons. Uh, but sometimes I'm using also the jade balloon because the anatomy is difficult to rewire. And so it is, it is important to keep uh, open the side branch uh, and to be sure that you, are, you can recover side branch, then jailing balloon can be important. Thank you. Thank you. Another interesting fact, Dr. Timir Pal, Dr. Timir Pal from USA. Do you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, thanks, Dr. Uh, Professor Shaivan. Nice to see you again here in uh, virtual. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Excellent presentation as usual. And then I learned a lot, uh, especially I did not know that uh, length of the side runs uh, more than 70 millimeter is important. I mean, that uh, we don't go by the length, usually the area more than 10% myocardium or diameter is more than 2.5. Then we try to do protect uh, side brands or double stent strategy. I have two uh, simple questions for you. One is the, uh, if you do the DK crash, you recross with the proximal part or after the kissing balloon second time, either proximal is better or you can do some mid. Is there any other um, uh, bifurcation uh, two stent strategy that you have to recross distal? Well, uh, in provisional stenting, crossing distal is important. In culotte technique, crossing distal is important. Uh, in uh, uh, tap technique, it doesn't matter. I mean, you, you are not recrossing, you, you crossing like in provisional. So you are provisionally crossing, uh, stenting the uh, main vessel then crossing distally, putting the second stent in tap, a uh, step with small protrusion in main vessel, then you don't have to recross again anymore. So it's like crossing in provisional, so distally. The only, the only technique that you need to cross proximally or, or to try to cross proximally is DK crush or mini crush as well. E even if you are not doing DK crush, when you are crossing also after uh, mini, mini, mini crush, uh, try to cross proximally because distally you often have some gap between the, the stand and the origin uh, and the side branch or, uh, orifice. So you might, if you are crossing distally, you might cross abluminally and then you will have some, some uh, stand uh, crushing on the, on the side branch only. Thank you. Uh, I think very, this is very important uh, piece of uh, bifurcation stenting. It, uh, I want to re-emphasize, and a lot of people do a DK crash. I think one of the common strategy for uh, double stent technique, at least I do, uh, my default strategy if I want to shoot. Sure. I have one yeah. more uh, question that uh, just uh, not true bifurcation lesion, like suppose diagonal, uh, big diagonal, three millimeter vessel, just osteal uh, and more than 10 millimeter um, from osteal to plug. And maybe the um, LAD, maybe may not be a little bit plug there in the very osteal side. So what is the best, like, it's kind of osteal lesion, you can consider not Medina like 001. So mm -hmm. what is the best strategy? You can do the stand, put back, a little bit tap. My question to you, do you do um, kissing balloon at the end or I had a patient what? I did, did not do kissing balloon at all, and then he came with re instant distance. No, was. actually, I mean, if, if you have only osteo, that means one, zero, one, uh, then only osteo, that means only osteo side branch, then I think that it is only osteo treatment. So mm -hmm. you do not need to go for, if you are go going for kissing, then you have to stent main vessel as well because you cannot inflate balloon without without protecting the vessel later because this might might I mean you are treating the osteal lesion and then patient will be coming back with restenosis on main vessel. Mm. So what is uh, today can be can be proposed is uh, something like Xabo technique, for example, to 
match exactly the stand with the ostium offside branch or a reverse crossing that uh, reverse provisional that means provisional stenting from with crossover from diagonal to proximal uh, uh, to proximal main vessel crossover from main vessel to side branch you understand you uh, got thank, it thank you yeah yeah, yeah. thank you uh, we have the uh, i have three coach here with uh, Dr. Professor Dr. Chodhi Bashkadamis, sir. Do you hear me, sir? He also yeah. was from IBI. Yeah. Yes, I can hear you. Uh, it has been an excellent presentation. Things have been explained very simple way and in a very lucid and clear way. I, I had a simple question to you. Whether the availability of the amazing modality, uh, intracoronary amazing modality, changes your strategy? Uh, well, not change my strategy, but change my uh, approach. That mean, uh, gave me a more uh, confidence with the, with what I am doing because I am seeing the result. I'm I'm in able to optimize also my result uh, because uh, particularly uh, with OCT and. Uh, 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 three-dimensional reconstruction of the vessel, I think for optimization is the best technology today and gives you more and more security and comfortability with what you are doing. Uh, but of course, I mean, a strategy and what you are doing uh, is improved by skill. That means how, how many times you are doing that. And if you are guided by intravascular imaging, you, you, you gain more and more confidence with the procedure. Thank you. thank you. Dr. Khaled Mohsin, sir. Hello. Thank you, uh, Dr. Shiban, for a real master class on a very different terrain of interventional cardiology. And you have explained very nicely. I have got two questions uh, to ask to you. Uh, if a few years back, there was a lot of uh, interest in dedicated bifurcation stents. So what is the current status of the dedicated bifurcation stents? And has they been abandoned uh, largely nowadays? Because you didn't mention about them in your lecture, number one. Number two, that uh, whenever you are doing a bifurcation, encounter a bifurcation during an acute coronary syndrome, do, does your strategy differ from a patient who is having a stable clinical condition, actually? These are the two oh. questions. Excellent, excellent question. I, well, first of all, dedicated stents. Uh, I think I, I was one of the uh, beginners of dedicated stents where I, I, I did uh, my, uh, my patent with, uh, with Invatec at that time, the twin rail uh, stent. But I would say that I was also the first to abandon this because it was making the, I, I mean, the intention was to take the procedure more easy but with dedicated stent, you are taking it more complex <laughs> uh, because you are working on two wires, uh, two balloons, and so on. Uh, so I think the experience today with the dedicated stents is really very small. And uh, more, uh, I would say that companies today are not even more that much more interested to the dedicated stents because conventional stents are giving really very good uh, results. Uh, you can modify the, the shape or the convention stent uh, accordingly to the anatomy of bifurcation. So at the end of the story, you do not need to complicate your life with a dedicated stent and dedicated procedure and more complex procedure. So I, I think the future is uh, will we'll still we in the in the future we're still using convention stents for bifurcation. Uh, this is one point. The second point is that you do not have a single stent that can fit with all uh, the all all uh, lesion all bifurcation lesions because every bifurcation lesions have different length of lesion have different. Uh, uh, size has different. So, I mean, it is difficult to have an ideal that dedicated bifurcation uh, stent. So I think that the future will not, it's, it's not for dedicated bifurcation stent, but for conventional stents, good conventional stents with good designs 
a DQ weight to be used in bifurcations. For the second, I mean, uh, second question about uh, bifurcation in uh, acute coronary syndromes, it depends on how much thrombus con uh, le the lesion is containing. I mean, if you uh, do not have that much thrombus, I will follow the same rules as in uh, non-acute uh, uh, coronary syndrome uh, situation. That means instable. If you have thrombus, I think that could, could be much more challenging because you should avoid putting too much stent. Even if you have complex bifurcation, you should leave. Uh, maybe the, the best thing to do is to restore flow, give uh, antithrombotic therapy, and come back to the patient later. If, if it is possible. In some cases, we did it that because the huge thrombus barding was there and we, you, you can complicate more and more the procedure if you are putting one stent or two stent as well. Uh, again, I, I mean, it depends on, on how much thrombus containing the, le the bifurcation lesion in the, in the acute phase. Which technique would you follow in that patient? Well, uh, if it's possible to aspirate, I'll aspirate every time. Even if uh, trials are, are telling us that aspiration is not good, <laughs> it's not valid. Well, which are stain type like that? Or uh, the stain, or the stain, to, the st open, open strut. That means white cell, open cell uh, stents. Uh, I, I would say majority of, of stents today on the market. Uh, will be will be good for for this. Uh, I, I'm not using me mesh stenting, or I, I would prefer a, a aspiration before and then putting a regular stent. Do you use DK cross in that scenario, or uh, if no, the no, 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 no. I'll not for compl complicated things. In in this subset of of patient, that mean uh, you do not you should do everything quickly, uh, restore flow quick, quickly. If uh, and uh, avoid uh, rethrombosis again in that patient. So any procedure can, with with more layers of stents with uh, let's say can keep bulky things on the bifurcation or or like this, I would avoid doing uh, complex things. I'll go for provisional stenting in these cases and come back to the patient later if if it's needed to do something on side branch. But the main thing is to restore flow, T three flow in both branches. That is. Uh, okay. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and good evening to all. Dr. Mohsin Ahmed is a bit disconnected, so he called me to take over. Uh, it was a brilliant lecture. Dr. Shivan uh, learned a lot, really appreciate. And you're always a good friend of Bangladesh. We all learn from you. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. And uh, I would like to also thank IPDI uh, for taking this platform for this international forum. And also I take this opportunity to uh, express my deep condolence for uh, two deaths. One is uh, mother of Dr. Wadud, who is chairman of IPDI. May Allah bless her Jannah. And also one of my very good friend, my uh, immediate senior course mate in MD. He's from Nepal, a senior cardiologist, Dr. Labha Joshi. He was a very amicable person, very wonderful person. I think Arun Maski can tell about him uh, more. Uh, I, I just saw from Facebook that he died uh, um, uh, one week back. May his uh, uh, soul rest in peace. My two simple questions to you. you. You described all the techniques, but I would like to know about the v stenting. S case is now obsolete because of the higher rate of v stenosis, but we can you uh, still this stenting if left man is short or you know left man is disease free so the only osteoarthritis star can uh, LED is involved so you comment on this stenting one and second thing in Bangladesh because of you know economic constraint uh, we can't use uh, you know IVAS or IFR in all cases IFR or FFR so in my go in cath lab when I uh, do provisional stenting if I see the side branch is pinched, maybe it's, it's, it looks like 90% pinched, but there's TME three flow, I don't touch it. I don't touch it. 
previously I, I would like I, I would do a kissing balloon, but now, now I don't touch it. If it's not Timmy two floor, Timmy one floor, then I go for kissing balloon. If there's a decision, then I put a tap technique, whatever stand, professional stand. Team. Without doing IFR, I want you to take on it. Okay. So uh, the first question about V stenting, V V, v stenting. Yeah, V. Uh, I would say that it is a good stent bailout stenting technique. Bailout that means from very uh, very unstable clinical situation and emergency. Uh, but uh, I mean, if you if you have good experience in any other strategy and you can do it quickly, I mean, it is it is the same, valuable the same. Uh, but again, uh, V-stenting is putting two stents together, uh, creating a new carina, it's creating metallic carina. The main problem of this approach is when, if you need to come back to the same patient in the future, this might create some problem because you never know where you are crossing from whether inside some strut and then uh, going uh, going in in the through lumen uh, in the in the, the other lumen and so on, and this might create uh, uh, again uh, difficulties on future procedures. From acute phase point, I mean it is good. Uh, there, if you have, uh, uh, I mean there are many uh, reports on this uh, on this technique. Uh, showing that the uh, angiographic outcome is good as well as clinical uh, uh, clinical outcome is good. Uh, what I do not like uh, to leave a very large uh, metallic carina in the in the lift, particularly in lift main. Second question about uh, 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 provisional what you are doing. side branch. Yeah, what they are doing in. Uh, in newer cat lab in uh, the absence of intravascular imaging uh, or FFR or not possible to use it every time. Me, I, I'm doing the same. That means also in my cat lab, I am not doing FFR every time I see something on side branch or I was in every bifurcation uh, because we have also resource restriction as well in my, in my country. Uh, but again, uh, I would, uh, underline again, it is, it is important to have intravascular in complex bifurcation for very important bifurcation like lift main. Beside this, I will do what you are doing the same. I mean, if it is side branch is small, that means less than 2.5, uh, not that much long. It is just enough to keep it open with Timmy 3 flow no symptoms, no ischemic ACG. If it, you still having is, uh, let me relevant side branch, you have some bench of side, side branch. The main thing for me is to be sure that you have access to side branch. That means I will cross with wire. I try to cross with a used balloon or to be sure that I'm crossing to side branch. And again, if patient is not experiencing angina, ACG is fine, TME3 flow is good, and even if the pinching is 50% of stenosis, I will leave it. Uh, or if it is very important, I'll go with FFR. That, mean, that doesn't mean that you, I need FFR every time I see some pinching on side branch. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing the same what you are doing, I'm following the same, and mainly clinical clinical uh, relevance of symptoms, ACG flow, TIMI flow are very good to follow. That means are very good, uh, good uh, uh, criteria to follow, of course. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Odud Bhai, can you please take over? Yeah, thank you, Amol Kumar Chaudhary. Amol Kumar Chaudhary, do you hear me? Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Dr. Mahashin and uh, Chairman of IPDI, uh, Dr. Raghu. I also like to condense my uh, heartfelt condolence to the death of his mother. Uh, uh, thank you, Imachivan. I am Professor Amal. I was CBD and also in your cat lab in, uh, in 1917. 
Uh, thank you. I have uh, 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 nothing to ask any question. You uh, you you touch all the pause and come for bifurcation later. I have two very silly question. Number one, if I did uh, did a provisional stenting and pinch the side bands like the diagonal or of two marginal, even then circumflex, we open the start by a small balloon. What you have mentioned already. Can you did uh, port or report or kissing balloon again, or if we open the start only by small balloon? Number one, number two. All of you know that the metallic button is the long stem uh, resistance rate is high. If there is any metallic button, two layer, three layer, or like this. So I like to ask, what is the reason behind do the decay cluster? So it is superior, but I like to know what is the reason behind the decay cache is superior than any other cache or the metallic burden is very low, like nano cache. There is no metallic burden even, the, uh, even then in the side brands. Uh, I think you also know the nano cache. Uh, we also like to now follow this technique. I have... Okay, about your first question, I mean, if you have some uh, shifting, uh, Karina shifting, I think... Uh, after part after uh, a part in main vessel, I think if you are going with small balloon, Karana shifting can be corrected with small balloon without deformation of the stent. So you do not need again to kiss and unpot. So if you correct everything with small balloon, smaller balloon than the reference vessel on side branch, the, the reference diameter of side branch, then I think you do not have any deformation of the stent. You do not need to repot or recross with uh, uh, to do kissing balloon. Uh, the second question about nano crash, nano nano crash. I think uh, we should define what is nano crash. Nano crash is T stenting, because if you are not crushing and creating two layers of stent in main vessel, you are not crushing anything. So. Nano crush is comparable to T to T stenting, and uh, that that is, actually it is T stenting because you are not protruding with the, the stent in main vessel, just like tap but reverse tap, and you are doing T classical T. So uh, we do not have data about, but I think the data will be similar to T T stenting as well. Now, about comparing DK crash with other techniques, I agree with you that we do not have that all these data are coming from single center, which is Nanjing Center, that these operators have a very high experience with this technique. And we do not know how many, how much experience they will have with culotte or with provisional or with whatever. So uh, let's say that it is accepted that DK crush have some advantage because you are not leaving three strut of uh, stent layers on in front of the side branch. This is very good uh, reason to do DK crush. How much is it better than culotte, optimized culotte or optimized T stenting or optimized, we do not know. Uh, so my point is, that it is not the strategy itself, it's the optimization and the experience of operator on what he is doing. So I, my recommendation is every time you are doing, uh, uh, doing a two stance technique in bifurcation, follow step by step, try to optimize accordingly to what you have learned from bench testing, from what you know about stenting, try to translate it in clinical in clinical setting, and do it step by step. Do it optimally. That is, whatever you are doing, what TK T stenting, nano crush, DK crush, uh, mini crush, culot, mini culot, whatever. The other point is try to overlap as less as possible stents. That means if you are doing a culotte, the overlapping should be minimized as well as crush, crushing, the overlapping will be minimized. The 
protrusion in main vessel, that means tap will be the minimum, minimum. So every time try to do what you have learned, uh, what you are doing in optimal manner and uh, try to avoid too much overlapping stance. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor Akim Reja. Do you hear me, sir? Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you, IPDI, for arranging this uh, wonderful session. And thank you, Professor Shiban, for wonderful lecture. Actually, uh, he made the uh, bifurcation relation uh, easier and uh, uh, individual discretion and the experience also. One of my question, very simple question, that during decay crash, when I crush the side branch stent, uh, which size of the balloon is best? Is it the main vessel size or the uh, 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 other side branch uh, mm. vessel size? Mm. Well, uh, that's another good question because somebody today is going to I mean, uh, modifying in pot, that means uh, use a um, large main balloon, vessel. yeah, as main vessel, proximal main vessel. Yeah. I, I would say that uh, I, I do not agree that much with this because if you are using that much large balloon in proximal part, only like a proximal part of the main vessel, then you might create a gap at the ostium of side brain because the stent will be crushed more and we've been shifting a, a bit shifting toward a uh, proximal part of main vessel creating a gap with the main with the side yeah. branch so <coughs> i i would keep uh, i would keep uh, crushing with distal main vessel reference which is enough i mean it's enough crushing and then and, uh, uh, yeah please and uh, in which pressure in pressure. How much? How much pressure? How much, how much pressure? pressure for crush? Ah, pressure. Pressure. Is, okay. Yeah. Uh, pressure. I will go with when, when I am crushing. I will go for nominal pressure, uh, and up two or three atmosphere, four atmospheres up to nominal pressure of the balloon. It is enough. Okay. Thank you, sir. And during Thank kissing, you. the first kissing. And. And uh, during first kissing, kissing. Oh well, during first kissing Benefits. again. Benefits. First kissing, yeah. I will do. After crushing, I'll do same pressure, nominal balloon pressure in both. With with same balloon. Same that, same balloon, that, yeah. Same, same balloon in yeah. main vessel, and adequate size balloon to side branch. Okay. Uh, what what is uh, what is my experience is uh, that sometime the main the side branch ostium I mean proximal part is larger than the distal part where the stent is ending, so I might go with a bit more uh, larger balloon for the side branch uh, dilatation. It's like uh, not pot but uh, optimization of side branch. After after crossing to side branch after crushing crushing the stent. Yeah. Thank that you. That could help. Sir. That could help in opposition in op uh, 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 opposing the stent optimally to side branch before putting the stent in main vessel. Thank you, uh, Professor Saidu Roman. Professor Dr. Saidu Roman. Yeah, Dr. Shaman. Yeah, just a few days, a few just a month back when uh, I have to. Uh, talk about this bifurcation in front of you in CSI Nick. It was really puzzling, and still it, it puzzles me because after this lecture of yours, it's really so meticulous. Uh, uh, that's a very, very much uh, helping. And uh, my, my, uh, just uh, while I read these things, because I love doing bifurcation. Uh, but and you were uh, the the main stay of the A B E B C. So the, uh, the question is my, of mine is that the cutoff values of this side branch diameter 
for complex bifurcation and also the disease length of the this this is this is this has been shifted a little bit isn't it because uh, it was before more than five millimeter now it has become <laughs> yeah, more than 10 so yeah, yeah. you know that this is puzzling sometimes yeah. for me and yeah. and the thing is that in this part of the world uh, actually even you can't uh, uh, predict it from there sitting there because when i i worked in, uh, in 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 your continent i, I have seen lots uh, the bigger vessels so it was very uh -huh. easy for us but now in this in this part uh, even uh, the led is the maximum diameter is 2.5 and a diagonal is 2.25 or uh, and or sometimes it's less than 2.25 but it is uh, obviously more than 70 millimeter maybe in the length and uh, obviously that small vessel is yeah. supplying more than 10 percent myocardium so so at that time you know that nowadays so much i'm hearing this 2.5 and 10 <laughs> millimeter. I feel that whether I'm doing an inappropriate to stand strategy I'm taking or not. So <laughs> that one is my first question. And another question is for the technical side that uh, if you have a uh, bifurcation, uh, the lesion, especially in the proximal LAD, Mm -hmm. and a diagonal is a high diagonal and and you don't have uh, that much space for pot because your balloon size is in europe is maximum is five millimeter and in our country we get only eight millimeter so we don't have any option for pot at that time what you do mm -hmm. in this type of bifurcations what you do oh uh well actually two, <laughs> two fantastic questions <laughs> uh, we do not have magic numbers anyway <laughs> that means uh, uh, yes we we went from five to eight to ten and uh, maybe in the future 15 uh, <laughs> but what is important i think that what we consider focal stenosis which is within five millimeters i think uh, it can be managed or handled by balloon. But uh, if it's an LCX, if it's an LCX, and if it is uh, a left main, distal left main, and okay. FFR is FFR is less, is less than 0.8, okay. and although it's a severe osteal stenosis, there 90 percent is there, but it's, it's not more than five millimeter even. Okay. The stenosis is well, there. actually, actually, we do we do prevent stenting also on lift main in distal lift main. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that uh, I mean, uh, uh, circumflex. If we consider circumflex as side branch, is not a true side branch, but it's main vessel. But yeah. of course, I mean, if it is dominant, my my strategy will be different. Okay. If it is dominant. If it is not dominant, co-dominant or normal circumflex or uh -huh. small circumflex, then uh -huh. I'll treat it like any any other side okay. branch. Okay, so okay. I'll uh, if it's small, uh, short lesion, I'll try with balloon. We are we are uh, uh, participating now to a trial with drug eluting balloon, which could be the rationale is there and could be okay. a good solution. Uh, in the future, we'll see whether it is effective, like a stent, or better than conventional balloon. And I think the, the future could be like, like this. Now, the second uh, question is much more difficult, uh, because if you do not have space for pot, I think I will go for high pressure inflation, uh, mm -hmm. even uh, not pot, even, I mean, protruding in distal main vessel with a small balloon. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, maybe keeping a wire in the side branch in the meantime in order to be sure that if you have any compromised side branch, you are free. Uh, I mean, you have access to side branch and go, go inside branch and you can uh, uh, correct whatever will happen inside branch. But in, in that case, I will extend pot distally to, main, uh, to, to uh, side branch, not okay. proximally. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Khaliko Jaman, do you hear me? Dr. Khaliko Jaman. Okay. Thank you. Thank Dr. Sivan for a wonderful lecture and the wonderful session participating the faculties Thank and you. we are enriched with our uh, recent knowledge. I have two small questions to you. In provisional uh, side branch st stand strategy, we 
usually prefer not to dilate, pre-dilate the side branch. Is there any situation where it is better to pre-dilate the side branch? Number one, question number two question is that there is recent uh, a technique or strategy called nano crush inverted T technique or NIT technique. Do you think any superiority of this technique over the decay crush technique? Thank you, everyone. Okay, so uh, actually uh, pre-dilatation uh, of side branch, if you do not have a very tight lesion, no calcification, uh, um, it, it is not recommended. Uh, I would, uh, I would uh, dilate side branch even in provisional stenting. If I am, my intention to treat is provisional stenting. If I have very tight lesion and uh, there is a risk of uh, abrupt closure after stenting of, of uh, the main vessel. Let uh, me few few cases I will uh, dilate. The other situation that uh, if you have a big side branch with tight lesion, tight calcified lesion, I think it's good to pre-dilate because sometimes after stenting, you cannot even cross to side branch because of calcification and might be undilatable with balloon. So it is better to know that before putting the stent uh, and you can, you can manage that with rotaplation maybe before stenting or debulking before stenting and go for change your strategy before putting a stent in main vessel. So in calcified tight lesion, I will pre-dilate in very tight lesion, I predilate, particularly uh, uh, those tight lesion that uh, are very involved in the main vessel lesion as well. So after after stenting main vessel, you you might uh, the, the risk of abrupt closure of side branch is very high if you are not doing uh, uh, predilation before. The Thank second, you, second question, second question about nano crush. I think I have, uh, I have already answered the yeah. reply to uh, your colleague, and uh, I think that uh, nano crush is uh, something like T stenting. So I think it is not uh, par comparable with uh, with crush. Thank you, sir. Doctor Ashok Dotto. Doctor Ashok Dotto, do you hear me? Doctor mm -hmm. Ashok Dotto. Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Dr. Yeah. Marshall. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Shivan, for nice presentation. Uh, I had opportunity to work with you in my lab in National Heart Foundation uh, several years back. So. And I remember. I remember that. It was wonderful. Yes. Thank you. So I have a small question regarding provisional single stenting. If the side branch is pins, uh, and after dilatation, you need final kissing balloon inflation. What is the size of the balloon for the side branch? I will go if I, if, if my intention to treat is provisional stenting, I will undersize the balloon to the side branch. That means if side branch is 2.5, then I'll go with 2.0 balloon and open open with 2.0 in order to avoid avoid the dissection of side branch. So it depends on uh, what, what, is your, what is your strategy. But it is better every time uh, to go with smaller balloon because you'll avoid, you'll avoid dissection. And uh, uh, carina shifting mainly can be corrected mainly by small balloon inflation. That is uh, different from uh, uh, plaque shifting. Plaque shifting needs to to do something more, but carina shifting can be corrected simply by small balloon inflation inside branch. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Doctor uh, Imadshwar, I have a small question. Uh, yes. If any JLOR is the LCX or any any hyperglycation in D1 or OM, uh, uh, particularly elephant. Uh, is there any need to remove before report or uh, it is not matter to keep the gel wire up to the report? 
No, I'm, I mean, uh, I am used to keep it in the main vessel during pot, uh, in, the, in the side branch during pot. Uh, pot is done not at the highest pressure. That means pot uh, uh, with the nominal balloon uh, pressure. Then if nothing will happen on side branch, I will, I will retrieve my wire and complete pot for higher pressure then rewire if needed. But after removing, you, you need to report. After, after removing, I, will, I, I keep the, the balloon in, uh, in position. I retrieve the wire and go for, for higher pressure when, uh, after checking the, on the side branch, what happened on side branch. Thank uh, you. Dr. Shiba. Thank you, sir. Can I ask? Could you yeah. uh, yes. uh, oh, Thank but... you very much, Professor Imad Shiban, for your Excellent deliberation. We have learned a lot about the bifurcations. I have two questions. Your recommendation is if I touch the left main, I have to cover the ostium. There are some study shows there is a uh, left main ostium, there is sprinter, which is working and regulate the flow to the LED and the LCX. And it is recommended to spare the left main sprinter and put this stand five millimeter away from the ostium. What is, what is your view in this case? And uh, my second question, in case of culotte and in case of tap, usually we go for the, in culotte, we go to the side branch without the predilection of the main branch. And in tap, we go to the uh, uh, main vessel without predilection, the side branch. But you are recommending the both predilection. If yeah. the decision happen, then my strategy may be changed. Mm. What is the new recommendation? Okay, so about uh, about uh, osteal coverage or, or not. I mean, uh, if you do not have disease on osteal left main, you it's not mandatory to cover that. Uh, but you, it is mandatory not to inflate balloon outside of where you are stenting. Yeah. So. If you are doing kissing, if you are doing pot, you should keep your balloon inside the stent, not protruding outside of the stent. Yeah. My I, preference, exactly. my preference is to cover till the ostium. And I think that uh, it, it, it will not be changing the flow that much, whether to uh, uh, LAD or uh, circ. But, uh, the if main the lift... thing, the main thing is uh, to have good opposition of the stent in lift main every time you are stenting, whether it, you are covering uh, oste or the ostium or not, and not inflate balloon outside of the stent if you are not covering the whole lift main. What second, we... second what question, we... second question. For coolant and uh, TS stent. Yeah. About yeah. culotte, about culotte, of course, I am recommending to do kissing balloon before, inflating also the stem protruding in main vessel before, because you have to prepare the stem to receive the other stem. That means you have to open widely the strut where the, the second stem no, 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 to no, main not, vessel should be accommodated. Question, not the kissing. My question the initial predilection. Ah, initial. Before, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 absolutely, yes. Because if you if you have you need to have good preparation of the lesion in order to be sure that you your stent will be fully inflated. That may that that, that I mean, good preparation of lesion is associated with good clean, improved clinical outcome, even in conventional stenting. That means not bifurcation lesion. Same also for bifurcation, more and more important if you are putting two stents one inside the other. That means you need to have very good expansion of the stent, full, ex full expansion and full opposition of the stent. And in order to, do, to have this, you need to prepare the lesion. In same, also, same also for any two stent technique. In a situation, or we are planning to do in left main uh, of LED and LCX bifurcation and planning is step. If we predilect the LCX, 
if the LCX dissection happen, should you change the strategy? Well, if dissection can happen without instability, hemodynamic instability, I mean, you can keep your strategy if patient will, will, uh, will be stable, uh, even with dissection. Uh, of course, I mean, if you, if you was preparing, uh, planning for uh, something complex that mean needs more time, you should, you should shift to another, something more simple in order to do it quickly before instability of patient. Uh, it depends also on the extension of the dissection on CERT, whether you have to change your strategy or not. So uh, in case it's not that much extensive uh, dissection, patient is still stable, I think that will not, will, I, I, I will not change my strategy. If something more important, more severe, more extensive dissection, patients start to be unstable, I think we, you, you, you have to uh, change your strategy. You have to correct the dissection before then to st stabilize the patient and then go ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Professor Abdul Adil, sir, any questions, sir? Professor Abdul Adil, sir? Yeah, I'm asking. Professor Shiban. Yes, sir. And yes, these days, we don't see that much of AIDS dissection. Do you think the, the improved stents are contributing to that? Because in our early days, we had much more AIDS dissection and, uh, with slow flow and no flow. But nowadays, we don't, have, we don't see this much. Mm. Yeah, actually, actually, in the past, we had much more edge dissection. Uh, I think because we have learned much more about what we are using. This is one. Second, we have better products, better, better technology. Third, we are aware about landing zone of the stand more than in the past. Uh, I would say that the first stands I have used were really bulky stands and uh, I would expect, I mean, dissection, AIDS dissection also today, if I use the same stent I was using at that time. So I, I think it, it, it's multifactorial. That means depends on the experience, depends on our uh, expertise uh, improved uh, and products improvement as well. This is what sec one. Second, I think that uh, um, the cobalt uh, chromium, alloy that are used today is much better than uh, stainless steel uh, in terms of uh, uh, rigidity, in terms of uh, thickness, in terms of uh, uh, causing dissection or not. Thank you. Thank you, Shiva. Uh, uh, I have a small uh, question to you. Do we yes. need a, any uh, kissing balloon predilatation before uh, putting a stand a oh. two stand strategy? Is there any uh, uh, benefit of this pre uh, stenting kissing balloon dilatation of uh, bifurcation lesion? Mm. Well, uh, I mean, uh, sometimes you are doing that, uh, particularly in uh, calcified lesions, I will do it, particularly in calcified lesions. If you don't have any, uh, any I, I mean, uh, any uh, under, in, uh, under expansion of the balloon during inflation or uh, full expansion of balloon uh, uh, done uh, simultaneous, I mean, uh, singularly in uh, main vessel and side branch, then I think that uh, kissing balloon inflation for predilatation is not that much useful. I mean, will not add any more, nothing to, to your procedure. If you have uh, calcified lesion, then I mean, it is important to know that both balloons or after putting two stents, how, how the, the, the uh, artery will be in, uh, um, dilated. And of course, will give you more chance to have full expansion of post tense in whatever strategy you are doing in bifurcation. Only in uh, calcified lesion, I, I'll do it. But okay. if, uh, if you, you are using rotaplation, for example, then 
you are rotating, uh, rotating both branches, I think at that point, you do not need to go for a uh, kissing balloon, just singular inflation, uh, separate inflation in both sides. So I don't have, I mean, no, no uh, clinical data on the usefulness of uh, kissing balloon predilatation. Thank you. Thank if, you if, it a, if it is extremely fibrotic, if it is extremely fibrotic in that case, also you, 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 a kissing balloon will help, Dr. Shiva? Yeah. Fibrotic, that means uh, yeah, you, that you feel that sleeping, there are much, much resistance, is there. Much resistance uh, to inflation yep. balloon, yeah. I think, so, yeah. So my another be... question, my another question is about you, you, your, your EBC mats uh, that the modified classification is there, the inverted one. Oh, okay. Uh, so while doing the provisional one, and you you need the second one, then a two stand strategy. Then which inverted technique you prefer or you like most? Uh, <laughs> inverted crush or inverted tap or no? I I I would avoid any opposition of stands in main vessel. That means uh, I will I'll I'll avoid the reverse crush. Okay. I I will avoid even reverse uh, reverse culotte because okay. you will never be sure that the opposition of the stent will be fully opposed to the second stent because you are mm -hmm. using smaller stent for the side bridge and okay. the fully expansion you might have some recoil of the stent and you can leave something bulky. So I will go for T stenting, yeah. modified T stenting. That mean might be tapped with small protrusion. But again, I mean, what is the limitation, the main limitation of TAP, that you are never sure of how much you are protruding with your stent. On Andrew, you cannot decide that because, because you don't see that much. It, it depends on the projection you are working in. Yep. So, yep. I mean, uh, I will go for good T stenting. That means putting a balloon in the main vessel, pushing back the my stent until it's touching the balloon inflated in main vessel, I am sure that I am covering what, what, is side, what I have to cover inside the branch and, and uh, delivering my stent. This could be the simple way to do it. But if the, if the angulation is too much, you know that the carina will be very much floating. Of course, yeah. The risk is to leave some gap and yeah, uh, yeah uh, that, that is uh, true. Uh, if, if the patient will be coming back, I mean, you can treat it with uh, a second, second, second option. Uh, that okay. means could be drug, drug eluding balloon. Why not? Yeah, Dr. Colombo likes this also. <laughs> yeah. No, okay. thrombolize, no, because I mean, uh, thrombo is not, is not risk of thrombosis because the gap yeah. is uncovered. Uh, I mean, uh, uncovered segment by stent. Yeah, so yeah. it is not increasing thrombosis, it's just increasing the rate, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We are running more than two hours. Lots of questions eagerly asked for you. Thank you, sir. I have Dr. Arif Raman Shajal. Any question yeah. left in the chat? Dr. Yeah, Arif? I, have, I have a question, sir. Yes. Do you hear yes. me, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you, yeah. sir. Uh, it's our great pleasure to have you with us. I have, very, uh, I have two questions. Number one question is, during recross, do you have any choice uh, for strut selection, such as a proximal strut or distal stuff like this? And another question is, as uh, the bifurcation stenting is increasing day by day, so the instant restenosis, we are also getting uh, the patient with instant restenosis and bifurcation stenting. So how do you uh, practically uh, manage this patient and what are the factors you keep in mind during managing this case? Mm. Thank you. Well, uh, about wire, wire selection for crossing, it, it was the first... Strat selection, strut. 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 Okay. Strut. strut, as I said before, I, I'm trying, you, you will try every time to cross distally if you are crossing for provisional stenting or for culotte stenting. For, for crush stenting, whether it's mini crush or dicky crush, I think proximal crossing is much more safe than distal crossing. And this is because as I showed you in one slide that if you are having a gap distally and you are crossing in the gap and then inflating a balloon, then will you crush the stent also, the proximal segment of the start in, in side branch and this will not be 
will never be able to correct that that uh, that deformation. So I think uh, crash, mi mini crash, and decay crash cross proximally. Other other procedure, uh, other techniques, uh, provisional or culotte cross distally. Uh, second question was about uh, yes. uh, uh, in instant restenosis in bifurcation. Uh, well, uh, I, I think it is uh, it is a big uh, big challenge because it depends on the uh, location. That means whether it's side branch, osteo side branch, or diffuse instant restenosis, or so on. Uh, what we uh, our strategy today is not to restent again, avoid to put a second stent or other two stents in the same bifurcation. So we are going for high pressure inflation, good expansion of stents, and then applying drug eluting uh, balloons. Wow. And some results we are having, but I cannot say that it is the best strategy because we do not have that much clinical data on. I think in the future, maybe could be uh, one of the uh, good options for treating instant restenosis in bifurcation as well. Uh, actually, we have good experience when you have focal instant restenosis, whether in main vessel or in side branch, it's even conventional balloon can be effective. Uh, mainly, mainly what is the cause of instant restenosis, focal instant restenosis is under expansion of the stent then when you are expanding the stent again, go with the size of your balloon a bit higher on the original stent size and go for high pressure in order to be sure that you are having a good expansion. And you can see the expansion by stent boost also. It is not mandatory to use IVUS. You can use the stent boost, which is available with every angiographer and that can help you in expanding more and more the stand. And uh, again, focal restenosis can be, I mean, can be a, an effective approach, just inflating, uh, just uh, angioplasty balloon uh, only uh, with high pressure, with uh, a bit oversized balloon to the original uh, diameter of the stand. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We should really stop now because a long time, two hours more you talk. Yeah. Before you join me here, you have another webinar I, I heard from you. Thank you, sir. Give me, give, give, give us it a valuable time. It is my pleasure. I, I, let me say that uh, we all still learning and learning and I'm learning every time I'm a speaker. I'm also learning from you. So I, I enjoyed very much and thank you very much for your kindness and invitation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, sir. I thank I thank every panelist from the home and abroad. Thank you, Bexumo Pharma, being with us for for seven months. Uh, we are doing great job. I am requesting Professor Abdul Chudri, please closing our session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you all. Keep, keep safe. Keep safe all. Professor Sivan, it seems like a great song. A never ending, never finished, and we are enjoying every moment and want to hear it again and again. I hope we'll be hearing from you again to have great interaction. The questions were as beautiful as the original lecture. We enjoyed okay. it very much. Thank you. Thank you. I, I hope we come back to normal life and uh, I can I can visit uh, visit you again. Live. So we can thank be you, live. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 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 Great presentation, great discussion. Ask a question? Yeah. Uh, we have, we have, ask it to ask it total program A grade. A triple plus. Including a question. Patina question is still a question. We are waiting at a nice lecture from the professor Sagiroman regarding yeah. bifurcation. <laughs> I think 
তারপর <laughs> 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 আমি তাহলে অজিত ভাই আমি চেষ্টা করব যে যে জিনিসগুলো টাচ করেনি মানে টিপিক্যাল যা জিনিসগুলো এই যে কুলোটের এতগুলো স্টেপ এগুলো কেমন না বলে প্র্যাকটিক্যালি আমি যা ফেস করি আমি কাজ করতে গিয়েছি যদি না ঢুকে থাকে আপনি তো প্রিডালাইজেশন করবেন এটা দুই ভাবে করা যায় হয় সিকুয়েন্সিয়াল প্রিডালাইজেশন করবেন অথবা এরপরেও বাইফারকেশন মানি হইতেছে আপনি জানেন না যে সাইড ব্রাঞ্চে আপনি ঢুকতে পারবেন কিনা জীবনে সাইড ব্রাঞ্চ হইতেছে আপনার ওয়াইফ এর মতো ওর ক্যারেক্টার বোঝা খুব টাফ হবে কখন কোন সময় কি রিয়াক্ট করবে আপনি জানেন না সবকিছু হতে পারে পাজলড হওয়া যাবে না এবং বিগ হার্ট এর হতে হবে যে না আমি পারবো এবং করতে পারবো করা যাবে হচ্ছে <laughs> এইটা আমার কাছে এখনো বলতে খুবই আমার কষ্ট হয় যদিও এটা মানে স্টাইলিশ থিং বাট স্টিল মানে পেশেন্ট এসে পেশেন্ট এসে দেয়ালে এসে আমার পিঠ থেকে দিয়ে পিস্তল না ধরলে আমি লেফটেন্ট বাইফারেশন করি না স্পেশালি এলসিএক্স 
because LED, you can give it, it will make some paper procedural MI and you can cover it again. But you can, you can be, you can just come out. But if LCS goes, go, means radiation, sudden assist. It's really tough. सबसे <laughs> जैपानीज लोक नहीं भलो ट्रु इंटरप्रिटेशन ना करते प्लैक मर्फोलजी भलो मत बुझे खाली एक देखते इम्पसिबल मन मन विचित्र जगह मिस्टेकुल थार्टी <laughs> डिफरेंट <laughs> उटारे डीएपीटी one month mm-hmm. is changing so whatever you are telling that that sort of things that pre medications i think after one or two years you will see that nobody is even giving ticarel or prosurel or whatever it is no loading because <laughs> actually how much is helping nobody knows there is no big data like this there is no right, big exactly like this. because you are giving right. it maybe two hours before how much it will work yeah, it's also the plasma half life is five hours it is it is just you are giving you are giving like that je khawar age ekta soup dite hoy bhalo ekta soup dao ei soup dao ta ki this palatable or not mission which hard for the process to is more experience in lipman degradation try to kitchen also try to kitchen also actually uh, for any for any ad hoc case our uh, catlap sister uh, 
uh, they used to give the Ticarel, or uh, usually Ticarel the uh, paper uh, for any ad hoc case, two tablet Ticarel. And regarding left, yeah. left, uh, left hand bifurcation, <coughs> usually uh, same loading with Ticarel and heparin, and in special circumstances, integrin we use. And I yeah. think in bifurcation, a uh, chance of thrombosis is the procedure is uh, uh, not complicated by uh, any way. Stent are expanded well, kissing is good, uh, port is good, then chance of thrombosis is less than the LED diagonal bifurcation, digital RCA bifurcation, chance of thrombosis is less because that is big vessels. Flow is maintaining. Always there is a rush of blood. All uh, yeah. dust to yeah. flow is maintained. So, so I like I like uh, always uh, I like always left hand because it's big big vessels. Easy to uh, Dr. Sadhu Roman says winding is easy, crossing is easy. So by is more tough in the diagonal LED because two, yeah. less than two point five vessels. I am telling you, let me tell you, this bifurcation is complicated bifurcation. But in case, complicated bifurcation is a 90 degree angled diagonal and LED. 90 degree angled diagonal and LED. To rewire that one, you will, you will sweat like anything. Yes. To rewire a diagonal at that time. Or it's coming in such a way, like, like a carved way. It's really, really tough. Hey, good night. Yes. 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 Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Timir is off. Timir is off. Day. No, no, no. Timir, 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 to young as a should be Timir to one mother chul to me. Ekoro. Okay. No, 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 Amadir, Amadir, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.